Hello and welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. I'm Reverend Maria. Friends, Jesus said to go out into every nation and proclaim the good news. That is the goal of Voices in the Wilderness. And we hope that our program will inspire you to draw closer to God. And as you draw closer to God, He promises to draw closer to you. Beloved, you don't want to be separated from God because the kingdom of heaven may be closer than you think. Our scripture of the day is Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Joining us again for part two of this interview is Pastor Jordan Wells. Pastor Jordan has a heart for revival and many call him a prophet. He is also an author, a weekly writer for God TV. Pastor Jordan has been featured in Charisma and the Wall Street Journal. He has a podcast called The Wells Report where he gives his bold and uh, prophetic insights. Welcome back. God bless you, Maria. <laughs> call me Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. So uh, we had a very interesting conversation, you know, uh, in, in the uh, part one. So we want to continue that. And um, so do you just want to recap a little bit about your book? Because, you know, we really want to talk about mm -hmm. your book, The Messenger. And I mean, it's a phenomenal book. And uh, so talk about that. Yeah, well, what we were talking about and what I want to focus on is the yeah. fact that we give a prophetic through novel form what God showed us uh, for the next 10 years with the next season. And really that what we talk about the Issachar, this is a Issachar word yeah. for the times to prepare the body of Christ for what God is doing, showing God what he's doing in our relig what we call the religious mountain, but then also in our political mountain. Because if you look at it, it looks crazy. It looks yeah. confusing. It looks like what's going on in our world, what's going on in our country, is it falling apart, what's going on? And it gives a per God lens to roll back the scenes, what's going on, what spirits, what spiritual uh, darkness is operating behind all this. Because we believe that this is a spiritual battle. Yeah. The Bible talks about that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. We are not fighting against pet people. Yeah. We're not fighting Democrat, Republican. We're fighting against evil entities yeah. that have an uh, assignment for our nation, for our, our cities. And we, as the church, have to begin. So this is what the message is about. It's a call for us to step into our place, to begin to pray, to begin to fast, to begin to get involved, to begin to seek the face of God, yeah. and to not be uh, on the sidelines sitting back, but to get in the ring. We yeah. have an enemy to defeat. Right. And I believe God wants to send revival to America. Yeah. I believe he wants to send revival to your nation. So this book is not just for America. This is right. a blueprint. Right. There are three, we talk about the blueprint in the book. What the blueprint is for historic revival right. around the globe has been the same. Welsh revival, whether you talk about Welsh, whether you talk about uh, Argentina, whether you talk about Brazil. Well, right. These people began to do something. And they ha and, and the Bible gives an ancient principle. And we talk about that in the message. What is the ancient principle to turn a generation? Right. Because God is not just sitting on the fence saying, Oh, well, I'm just throwing my hands up with this whole right. generation. I'll be back soon. Let them just fall apart and just right. be to themselves. Right. No, God says in the last days that the latter glory will be greater than the former. Amen. He also Amen. says that in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. But we love to talk about Joel 2 pouring out his spirit on all flesh. But, but what does it say before Joel 2? There is a remedy that God talks about before Joel 2. And, and that's what I kind of talk about in the book. I'm not going to give it all away. Because you have to go Amazon and get it. But, 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 the, but we talk about in that, in that book, we actually have a chapter. The prophecy of Joel is in the, right. is in the book. It's a pro, the prophecy of Joel. And we talk about the remedy that Joel used, the remedy that God gave Joel to produce the outpouring of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this book is a clarion call and is a call word for America and for this time to say the church in the next 10 years, this is what God is, this is what the enemy is trying to do, right. but this is what we must do for God's plans and purposes to birth into the earth. Amen. That is so, so good. That is so good. And I know that you have started a movement, right? Yes. And, and a movement, uh, Joel, Two, two generation, generation yes. Joel, two generation. And so what, what is at the heart of that movement? But we really, uh, God gave me a word for, out of Joel, out of the book of Joel. 
and he told me that the last days would be marked by the Joel book, the book of Joel, yeah. and how Joel was a, it's really a last days book, yeah. and it talks about, uh, you know, it talks about some things that we would consider negative, but it also talked about revival, yeah. outpouring to the spirit. It talked right. about how Israel, uh, there was a locust, locust that came through, right. destroyed the land. Uh, Israel had came under the, the shaking of God, and the whole land was laying desolate. And God told Israel, this is what I want you to do to restore your land. I want you to begin to do these things. Mm -hmm. And he gives them things to do. And if your priest, if your leaders will do these things, right. then he go, then we go to Joel 2, I will pour out my spirit right. on all flesh. And I believe my, my mandate is to call the generation to do that. I feel like uh, 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 one man I was greatly impacted, Lou Engle, mm -hmm. I talk about him a lot, but uh, that, that call, he used to yeah, do these sure. things called the call all around That's America. Right. Sure. I feel like mine is kind of a smaller version of that to mm -hmm. kind of just be a champion of a voice in government and all around America and all around the world to just champion a generation right. to begin to pray, to begin right. to fast, to begin to go after the face of God, to begin to humble ourselves and, and say, God, we will not rest right. until we contend for the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Because when the outpouring happens, evangelism is easy. Right. I'm, well, I'm, well you know, true. we're trying to, we're trying to, what we, people are so hard in the heart right now. Mm -hmm. People's heart is hardened. Right. And the way we, the way they're softened is true. When the fear of God comes, when the out, when there, when there's a, uh, the presence of God, they yeah. said in the Welsh revival, these revivals that I, you know, that I'm so mad, impacted by Maria, they said that the presence of God, people would, they wouldn't even be preaching. People would just come out of the conviction of God. They said, and, and, and you can feel the conviction in the land. Right. Like when you would go into uh, America, there was a revival that happened with businessmen by Jeremy Lampier in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they would close the businesses down to pray. Jeremy Lampier was a businessman and he had prayer. Prayer meeting exploded. It was thousands in the prayer meeting right. all across America. People began right. to pray. Right. It was prayer meeting, the, uh, the Moravian Falls. I can go on and on. But right. the, the, the premise of this is that my heart in the Jolter generation was to call a generation to do that, to Amen. pray, because we cannot have revival without prayer. And, that, and prayer is so, and, and prayer is so simple because prayer is just communicating with mm -hmm. God, going before uh, him and just, uh, you know, j just calling to him to be the, the leader, the, the king of our lives, submitting to him. And you know, when we submit to the king, I mean, he just will just elevate us. He blesses us so much, you know. And it's not about that because we just love him. We just want to do the just right thing. Him. But <laughs> but it does, it, it will change the world. Yeah. And so, you know, you were talking about, you know, the, the evilness in the world. There, there's so much division, as you know. I mean, uh, the government, we've never seen anything like this before. No. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, division in churches, division in families, all of this division. And so, uh, you know, even um, among, you know, our, our our cultures, you know, we, we see that, and uh, you know, with with, uh, unfortunately, there's so much craziness in the world. We see that a lot of um, our African American conservative uh, people, yeah. brothers. I mean, y you know, they get persecuted too, right? And they yes. they be called names and everything. And so, what do you tell those people that are race baiters, that that are you know uh, anti-Semitic, that just promote hatred? That that's yeah. really what they do. What do you what do you say to them? Well, I'm in. Like I said, I do a lot of work in politics. I'm running for U.S. Congress right now, and so. Um, and I, you know, ran for state house and I've been very involved in government for about the last few years, about the last few years. God did it. It's all the Lord. And, um, I have been, I do a lot of uh, social media politics and, uh, I get called names. I've got death threats. Yeah. Um, and so people are just full of hatred because mm -hmm. people are, re God, I, God took to me and I said in the book as well, but people hate truth. Yeah. And this is what it's about right now. Right. It's a war over truth. Yeah. And who is truth? What is truth? That's right. And Jesus is the truth. That's right. He's and the truth. Yeah, he is the truth. And so 
as a person, I never sought to be uh, anything. I thought all Christians were conservative, you know, yeah, because I, God. I know, you, you would think, right? <laughs> you know, because God is the, the moral standard, you right. know. So, you know, w we are agents of truth and moral standards for the world. God is the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Right. So if there is no, God is, we would, we would be all morally bankrupt if it wasn't for a holy God telling us this right. is how holiness, right. righteousness looks in the earth. And so when I begin to speak on things, people begin to say, oh, that's being political. No, I didn't think it was. <laughs> right. I thought right. it was just as I read the scriptures, these things are just common sense. Right. These exactly. things are just normal things right. that, that people teach. And, you know, uh, people say, you know, when I would begin to make statements about how uh, I, I think we live in a great country. It was, a, it was a, a, a country of freedom. People come in from all over the world. People, you know, lining mm -hmm. up to get here, you know, right. crossing the border to get right. here. You know, right. and, and we're in America. We're privileged. We don't understand. I lived in Africa for a while. And I saw people living on two dollars a day income. Right. You know, we're in a blessed nation. We I are. mean, this nation we is are. so blessed. I mean, even the poorest person in America right. is more blessed than a lot of people in other countries. That's true. And so That's true. we don't. And Israel got like that. They right. really didn't understand how blessed they were right. until judgment came, until shaking came. They didn't really understand right. it that God was blessing them. America is so blessed. And yeah. so I refuse to accept victimization or any of that stuff because I realize that in my wor in, in my worst times yeah. I'm blessed to be an American. Right. I still Amen. cry at the national anthem. I still right. think about the people who died and sacrificed right. in our military that gave us freedom, that yeah. gave us the right. I mean, people in America don't think about as Christians, the you doing what you're doing, how blessed that is. Yeah. In some countries, you could be killed That's right. for, for having a studio and talking about Jesus. Right. You right. know, we get to share our faith. We could go to church on Sunday. I get to wear my Jesus necklace out in the open. Right. People don't get to do that in a lot of other countries. Right. I was right. over in some Muslim countries and some oh, Islamic yeah. countries. That I've been you there too. Yeah, you right. can't just go out right. with crosses and... and, and, and in some some of those right. countries, I had a person stop me at an airport because I had a cross on. Yeah. Uh, I was out and over in the Middle Eastern countries, and uh, one of the head imam type people walked up to me and he just gave me a real, real right. look. And I know it was the grace of God that kept me. I didn't know at the time I wasn't supposed to be wearing a cross that right. day. But that's where it is, and people right. don't understand that. And that's right. why I'm such a voice of truth yeah. for conservative values and things like that because. Yeah. We don't know that we are so blessed by God. God bless this country. Yes, amen, amen. And we want to continue that, that blessing. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we stand for Israel. You know, we, we keep on praying for everyone's salvation, including, you know, uh, innocent Palestinians and, you know, right now, you know. But, of course, you know, we uh, know that Hamas started this, the, the war, you know, we talked a little bit about the war, and Hamas it means violence. Mm. So it's a violence that has taken over the Middle East, you know, so uh, we continue to pray for people that seek truth. Yes. And, and really, that's what we're, we're called to do, to seek God's truth. And so uh, you also do these wonderful little podcasts, like yeah. minute and a half, yeah. uh, two minute, three yeah. minute. And they're powerful because even though they're, they're short little uh, messages, you get to the point. I mean, you, you talk about the kingdom, you talk about a spiritual warfare, you know, you talk about all of these things. So as far as spiritual warfare, I mean, we're, we're in the middle of a war, a spiritual war right yeah. now. And so, like you were saying before, it's not that we're struggling against people. We don't struggle against principalities, but we struggle against those forces that influence people, yeah. you know. That, and in our country, we could see that, you know, these, these negative forces are, are just influencing our government so horribly right yeah. now, you know. And, you know, uh, but, you know, Scripture also tells us that in the last days that people would call evil good and good evil <laughs> and, <laughs> we, and we see that and we see that's <laughs> happening it's like what you know like you said wh where's the common sense it's like common sense is no longer common no. and the obvious has gone out the window you yeah. know? <laughs> it's that rejection of truth that, Maria. Rejection. That, that Jesus said I am the truth yeah. the way and the life right. when people don't have God and God is not and this is why we have to have a God People who are atheists who say, well, I don't need God. There needs to be a God because without God, there is no standard. Right, exactly. That means I could be a pedophile and there's no, who, who's to say what's wrong? Right, right. Because if there's no God that's, right. that created everything that gets to make the rules, like a parent, if kids don't have parenting, yeah. they're going to do whatever they want to do. 
Right. If if there's no God, there is no moral standard. Your version of evil and my right. version of evil, they're they're right. they're you know, it's it's subjective. Right. And so that's the problem we have with our culture. We remove God out of our schools. Yes. We remove God out of our, our halls, we remove God out of everything. Yeah. And so since God has been removed, there is no definition of right and wrong. Right. And exactly. so what we had to realize is that when you speak truth, there is going to be now persecution. Right. There's going to be now attacking. You're going to be called a, I've been called a Uncle Tom. I've been called all type of stuff. Yeah. Um, I've been called, a, you know, a lover of, you know, they say, you know, you, you turn on your people. Yeah. All this stuff. When and, and it makes no sense. Which it, actually most African Americans are actually pretty conservative. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, but it's just a, a lie that, that I've, I, that we are, we've been taught that we have to go with a certain ideology and that's not true. Right. I stand for Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, that's really in politics. I stand for Jesus Christ. Amen. I stand for Jesus Christ in, in churches, yeah. you know, and, 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 and we, and we, and he's a standard. Right. I had a mentor that a long time told me, Jordan, stick with the Bible. <laughs> Best, I mean, I was sounded simple at the time, but yeah. I didn't know at that time how revolutionary that statement would be. Right, right. As I've gotten older and in the Lord and been more out, God has opened up more doors for me yeah. to speak truth. Yeah. I've realized that is very controversial. Yeah. <laughs> Just stand, saying, I believe that. There is a Who difference would, between a male and a woman. Yeah. That that there's males and there's females. Yeah. That there are things like that. That has become cancel culture. You can be pulled off the internet almost. Yeah. You know, for them just saying simple stuff. I have friends that yeah. I get censored all the time on yeah. TikTok and different things like oh, that. Oh my goodness. But I keep just speaking truth. Yeah. I, I, I won't let the and, enemy stop me. And you know, and that's what scripture says: speak the truth in love. And, yeah. And we're and we're speaking truth in love because we love. Our, everyone, right? Yeah. And that's what we're called to do, Jesus said, to to love our neighbor as ourself. So it's not because we, you know, we or hate him. People. We're, we're yeah. not hateful, but th that's what they don't understand. We're just speaking the truth in love. And so, I mean, well, with all of these things that you've learned, right, from from um, your writings, from your research, from uh, what is the, the greatest revelation, personal revelation that you've had? My, my, the per greatest personal revelation I have received is the importance of, it's very simple, of prayer mm. and having a relationship with God. Yes. A real relationship. Yeah. Because America is religious. Yeah. But we're not spiritual. We're not, we don't know God. Yeah. Um, and so that has been important for me, and that's really what has kept me for all these years is that I really fell in love with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I, f I fell in love with Jesus, and really, this general, we know a lot about God. Yeah. But we got to get back to knowing God, yeah. even in the church. I mean, I'm not talking about the world, because the world is going to be the world. Right, right. But the church, yeah. you know, one of the things, I, the, I when you read the book of Revelation, it talks about in the, the seven churches. Right, And he right. said, you fell away from your first love. Yes. And I believe those seven churches are a picture of the end time last day churches. Yeah, yeah you know? I think so too. Yeah, and so I believe that a lot of the church has fallen away from that first love, whether we're yeah. focused on it. There's no combination of this. But God wants to lovingly, like a bride, call yes. us back. Yeah. One of my stories I talk about in the book, The Messengers, is Hosea and Gomar. Yes. One of my favorite stories yes. of the picture of God. Yes. You know, he lovingly rebuked Israel. He lovingly rebuked. He told Hosea, go marry a prostitute. Yeah. And he wanted to give a prophetic picture. Yes. Uh, because I believe as a prophetic voice, sometimes our life is the best message. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, right. you know, and God liked to the mess up, mess with the prophets of the Old Testament. He said, "Go marry, a, go marry a prostitute." Who would he tell to go do something like that? You know, and she and she began to cheat on him. Yeah, and he said, "Every time you hurt Hosea, remember this is how I feel." Yeah, when when the when Israel would betray me. Yeah, I pulled them out of bondage, and this is how they treat me. Right. And I believe God is saying that to America. Yeah, because we're no different, yeah. in, you know, culturally. And yeah, America was a nation founded on God. I talk about yeah. that in my book. I really right. go deep into in the messages how America was founded on God. Our, our the, the pilgrims that came over here, they uh, they came here on the Mayflower. These people were all right. Christian organizations. Right. These were not political people. Right. These were religious people that were being uh, tyranny in England. They were uh, running to to have, share their faith. They just wanted to share their faith. Exactly. They just wanted to raise their kids to love God, and they wanted a place that they could do that. Without 
are being told by the government what they should do. Yes. So they came to America. They dedicated this soil when they stepped off the land. You know, and, and America had its you know its issues and things that did wrong. But as a as a as a whole, the purpose was to serve God. Yes. And so God, they made a covenant with God. Even yes. in Florida, over in St. Augustine, one of the first places they came over here. They yes. they they took the Bible. They took the and they planted this and said, God, we want to dedicate this land to God. Right. And I believe that's why America hasn't been judged like yeah. it should have. And that why yes. we're still here is because that God remembers the covenant. Yes. So when I do intercession over America, I say, God, remember your covenant yes. that you made with our founders, that yes. you made with the pilgrims, you made with the Puritans, and that's that you how made it, with these people. And that's how it parallels so much with Israel, because Israel has a covenant with yes, God, just did. like America has a covenant with God. Yes. And a big part of the covenant was the land. Yes. You know, and so the land belongs to, to Israel. It belongs to them, no matter, you know, what people say about, you know, dividing the land or whatever. It's something that, that it is to them because God promised it to them, just like we have America, and we don't want anybody to take away our, our the land of America. How would we react if people came and you know started a, a war with us? Would we just sit still and not you know care? You know, so we, I think every country has a right to defend yes. their their border, just like you know we're the temple of God and we have a right to de defend our Jesus, our you know our, our families, and and that's just part of who God made us to be. Well, we have an Americanized version of God yeah. that is more, <laughs> God is just a pacifist. Yeah. But God is, that's why the church, I talk a lot, one of my loves is spiritual warfare. I do love, I love it because we are not on a vacation as a Christian. Right. We're, we're in a, we're in a war. We're in a war. We're, 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 yeah. in, a war. we're in a war that's already won. The, Jesus yes. already won the yes. war, but we had to exercise that victory. Yeah. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent taken by force. force. Yeah. We are advancing through force. Right. And through prayer, through fasting, through decreeing yes. the word. The, and those are the weapons that we're talking yeah. about. We're not talking about, you know, uh, yeah, natural, natural weaponry and all that right. stuff. But in the natural Israel is also in a war. Yeah. And Israel has the right to defend herself because God gave her the land. Right. Exactly. And, and David was one of the most beloved people in the Bible. Right. But David was a warrior. Right. He, he was a general of war and he conquered many, many lands for God. Right. And so God is saying he doesn't want war. He doesn't like war. Right. But sometimes he permits it. Right. Because God gave Israel that land. Right. It belonged right. to them. They right. they didn't even they don't even deserve the land. Right. This is the thing. Yeah. And people None get mad at me. Do. People yeah. get mad at me and say, Well how can you defend Israel? They didn't they they crucify your Messiah. Oh my oh, goodness. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We crucify God every day. Yeah. And with the stuff we do, he yeah. looks at us sometimes. I'm like, you know, but I think it's a lack, uh, that's ignorance of yeah. not knowing the word of God. Really, it is. Because, of course, I hear so many crazy things and I'm like, wow, did you read your scripture? That's not, <laughs> that's not what it says. You know, <laughs> you know you're, I think people say things that they hear. You know, it may sound good to their ears, but that's not truth. So, you know, I think that if you if you really like you're you're a prophet and to really understand prophecy, you have to know the full counsel of God, right? Which is the Old and the New Testament, right? And uh, people, I think many are Western culture. Now we just like, oh, maybe just the New Testament <laughs> yeah. or maybe just the book of John. Yeah. And we they keep on, you know, yeah. uh, diminishing and d diminishing it until they make their own, uh, their, their own Great gospel. Job, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so what's next? What's next for you? I mean, uh, so now you're said you're, you're running for yeah. political office. Yeah. yeah. So where did, now I know you said that you never had this desire. Yeah. Where's this desire coming from? What do you think? Well, I've What's never been, I never thought I would run for government. I never had a desire to. I was not raised political. My mom is not a very political person. Yeah. You know, she vote, She barely votes, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, she's more active now because I am. But yeah. she, I never, it came from God. It came from heaven. I've never, I have dreams about politics. I have dreams <laughs> about uh, praying for this person. You know, I, I have dreams. I am assigned to it. Yeah. Um, it, it's a, I had a, a it's a ministry uh, called Stand for uh, Jackson, and they they had a class. And I actually taught that some people are called to minister uh, government politics as a ministry. Mm. Um, there's a oh, yeah. there's a great ministry called uh, Hope on the Hill. They uh, they actually have a big ministry on the in Capitol in Washington D.C. where they pray for both Democrat and Republicans. Oh, sure. They pray for sure. them. They lay hands on them. And a lot of people in our government are Christians. You wouldn't know that if you didn't know that. Yeah. There's a lot of godly people in the politics oh, ab around absolutely. fighting for truth. That, that, that really, there's always that remnant. Yeah, right? that they really go and they they read the Bible every day and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And so I have a heart 
uh, not necessarily for politics, but to because politics is the most important one. If we say the seven mountains are in, in all are important, yeah. But the religious mountain and the political mountain are two of the most important as far as the political mountain. If you have a wicked government, right, your life could be hell. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, just ask people that lived in Venezuela or that, oh, yeah. that fled absolutely. tyranny and you know, and during Germany. Yeah. It can be a very dark time oh, absolutely. depending on who reigns. Well that's why the scripture says that that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. So it's righteousness that has to be uh, moving our, our, our political realm. Yeah, because so that really sure. that political realm really dictates all the other realms. Yes. So politics controls family. Yeah. It controls entertainment. It controls religion because if you are have a dictator in office, they can say no right to yeah. worship. Yeah. No right to worship. You know, right. and you, God will still go forth. Yeah. But you know, who wants to have yeah. to do underground well, church? Yeah. You know? Well, I, I think maybe it's they influence it, but we hope it never gets to the point of control. We hope that they never no, control we, the and families. That's we, and that's what. And that's what we. That's why we fight. That's exactly and right. And that's why we exactly. that's why we fight and that's why we're not in the place in this country we are because we have godly people yes. that are praying. We have a remnant praying. We have intercessors. We have yes. watchmen. We have people in our government that are fighting, that are praying, yeah. and that are believing God. Yeah. Like in Sodom and Gomorrah, there yes. was 50. He said, if I could find 50 righteous. Right. And God always, t and I always t remind God, there are more than 50 righteous in America. That's right. That's right. So, you know, uh, it's sometimes it can be difficult to pray for a government when we don't, <laughs> when we don't agree with them. Now, Nevertheless, the, the Lord does tell us to pray for our, our leaders, right? So uh, uh, maybe uh, in a minute or less, an encouraging word for people to pray for their government, to, to really ch change the atmosphere. Yeah, know? well, God has called all of us to pray. So I pray for both parties, whether they're Democrat or Republican. We're supposed to call and pray for our government, to pray for our religious leaders, to pray. God is, you might not feel like, oh, I'm not really an intercessor. God has called all of us to be intercessors. There's no title or job description of intercessor. And I believe somebody's watching you. You've been feeling that burden. You feel something's going on. You feel like you need to pray. And I'm just here to just to confirm the word of the Lord. God is prophesying. He's saying to you, it's time to pray, church. It's time to pray. And I just feel even as we're talking that God is releasing that anointing to homes all over the country, to the intercessory grace God has given me. And I just release it to you right now that you'll begin to feel the burden of intercession right where you are. You will begin to feel the just a feeling of just fire of God will be in your bones. Like I, like the prophet, though, the fire was stood up in the bone. I release that to you right now in Jesus' name. Okay. Just take that right now in your home, the burden to pray for our country, the burden of intercession, the burden of wherever you are in the, in the world, to release that anointing of the watchman of the intercession of you right now in Jesus' name. That's good. We need that fire. We need that fire. <laughs> Thank you so much. I can't believe our time is up. Yeah. Thank you for your insights. And uh, we'll be praying for you, of course, you know, because um, God needs the watchman on the wall for sure. So thanks again Thank for so being family. here. And thank you, our viewing audience, for joining us here today. If you'd like more information about my program, please check out my website, VoicesInTheWildernessTV.com. You could email me at MariaGoldstein7 at gmail.com or call me at 877-991-4800. Until next time, we wish you good health, success, and spiritual growth. Remember, friends, that God loves you, and he's calling you to uh, just... Draw, to, draw closer to him because uh, it is wonderful to be in the presence of God. And, um, you know, the presence is all around us. Uh, around us. So, y you know, just call out to him and uh, he will really transform your life for the better. So until next time, shalom, shalom. God bless you and we'll talk to you soon. Shalom. God bless you. ascended up into heaven, or descended. Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth?
What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Proverbs 34 The Mystery of the Hebrew Letters Jesus Revealed by Rev. Dr. Maria Goldstein is available now in bookstores everywhere.